Hi there, and welcome to the HVA 3.0 Overview. I'm Caesar, and I'll be your guide as we step through what's new in HVA 3.0. First, here's a quick update on the AES HVA 3.0 e-learning course. AES is anticipating the release of the course in early 2025. All AES students who have been deemed qualified in AES HVA 2.0 assessment methodology will have access to the following. This AES HVA 3.0 microlearning video that describes the differences between HVA 2.0 and HVA 3.0, AES HVA 3.0 question set, and other AES HVA 3.0 documentation, AES HVA 3.0 e-learning course. This is offered to all students who feel they need a refresher and choose to take the new e-learning course. Practical exchange meetings or PEMs will be scheduled to discuss any of your questions. In this video, we'll discuss five main topics. First, we'll review the objectives and benefits of HVA 3.0. Next, we'll look at what's changed from HVA 2.0, the updated structure and associated documentation, and the different domains, questions, and guidance. Last, we'll review some tips for assessing HVAs using the new version. HVA 3.0 was developed in response to CIS's changing needs and the ever-adapting cyber landscape. The development team created the new methodology with several objectives in mind. First, CISA wanted to collect better data in order to more effectively support analysis, decision-making, and risk management. The HVA assessment needed a better way to provide clear and accurate data to support the analysis needs of CISA in the future. Next, CISA's vision for the future of HVA includes eventual integration with the Continuous Diagnostics and Mitigation, or CDM, and other data sets in order to perform assessments at scale. HVA 3.0 was designed with this future in mind. In addition, CISA wanted to support the ever-changing landscape of cybersecurity and the different ways that HVAs are developed, hosted, and maintained. CISA developed HVA 3.0 with on-premises, cloud, and hybrid systems in mind, and considered emerging approaches such as zero trust. Finally, HVA 3.0 remains focused on cyber capabilities, rather than on specific controls. Technology changes at a rapid pace. To keep the HVA assessment relevant, it must focus on the desired outcomes rather than on technical approaches that may be outdated in the future. Here are four key benefits of the HVA 3.0 methodology. Consistency, accuracy, analysis, and clarity. Let's take a closer look at each one. HVA 3.0 has a defined question set that ensures that all assessors gather the same information. This allows CISA to maintain consistent data sets across all HVA assessments. The HVA 3.0 report contains a standardized scoring mechanism to reduce subjectivity in risk rating determinations. This facilitates comparison over time and across organizations. The binary question format of implemented or not implemented makes data easy to analyze and aggregate, allowing for both quantitative and qualitative analysis. It also supports rapid querying to satisfy a specific request for data in a subject area, such as a particular weakness or vulnerability. In HVA 3.0, CISA has revised the report format to streamline the delivery of information to leadership and to focus on core issues. The improved data collection format also allows CISA to identify systems with specific and concerning weaknesses, then track their status. HVA 3.0 incorporates several changes from the 2.0 format in pursuit of the objectives we previously discussed. Let's examine five of the most important changes. The first change is the assessment consists of specific questions. Assessors may choose to ask the questions directly or have a more conversational style, but they must come away with clear answers to each question and document all of them. This provides a roadmap through the assessment for newer assessors, as well as helps experienced assessors easily track the information obtained and the questions that still need to be asked. The second change is, answers are recorded in a binary format, either implemented or not implemented. This allows the assessor to clearly document and justify how a capability is or is not being performed. The assessor still takes notes to explain the activity being performed to facilitate report creation. The third improvement is the reduction of compound questions. This resulted in an increased number of questions in the assessment, which helps CISA perform more effective and granular data analytics at the question level to understand trends in cyber practices. 
The fourth change is the creation of a clear guidance document to support assessors in effectively facilitating assessments and gathering information. I will show you a sample of the guidance a little later in this video. The new guidance document helps ensure that all assessors are seeking the same information in response to questions and are documenting their findings uniformly. Finally, the fifth major change is on the HVA report template. CISA has updated it in a streamlined fashion to reduce time spent writing and reviewing the report sections. The structure of HVA 3.0 has changed from the previous version. The top level of structure is now called a domain. Domains are similar to discussion topics from HVA 2.0. They are logical groupings of cybersecurity topics that are related to each other in some way. The next level of the structure are capabilities. Capabilities are core cybersecurity functions that the assessor is seeking to determine if the HVA and organization are performing. Capabilities are the main objective of the assessment and the level at which risks will be identified and referenced in the assessment report. Finally, the last level of the structure are questions. Questions are specific queries that can be answered in a yes or no type of format. In the HVA assessment, we mark them as implemented or not implemented. They are the detailed pieces of information the assessor should understand in order to determine if capabilities are being performed. HVA 3.0 contains 12 domains, asset security, identity and access management, continuous monitoring, incident management, vulnerability management, configuration and change management, application security, service continuity, supply chain risk management, risk, threat, and compliance management, workforce management, and governance. You may notice that many of these, such as identity and access management, align very closely with discussion topics in HVA 2.0. Other domains, such as asset security, are broader categories that include items formerly spread across a few discussion topics. In this instance, network-based protections, host-based protections, and others. The HVA 2.0 discussion topic of dependencies was divided into multiple domains, including vulnerability management, configuration and change management, and workforce management. Finally, the governance domain contains material that is brand new to HVA 3.0. Here is a sample of how capabilities are organized in a domain. The Vulnerability Management domain has three capabilities. One, preparation for vulnerability analysis and resolution activities is conducted. Two, vulnerabilities are discovered and analyzed. And three, vulnerabilities are managed. As you see, these represent broad categories of activities that we expect an HVA to be performing in the area of vulnerability management. Now, let's take a look at the questions that are asked in Vulnerability Management Capability 2. Vulnerabilities are discovered and analyzed. The questions are very specific and can be answered easily with a clear yes or no. The assessor uses the answers to each question, as well as to any follow-up questions they ask, to decide if the HVA is adequately performing the capability. Here's an example of the question guidance provided in the assessor guide for each question. Following the question are the criteria for the implemented response. Review them to ensure that you determine whether the organization is fulfilling them. Some questions have only a single criterion and others have two or more. Next is the discussion. This can be a long section that provides context and background to the material addressed in the question. Although much of this information may be familiar to assessors, it can be useful in filling subject matter knowledge gaps or providing an explanation for the organization if an SME is unfamiliar with the terminology used in the question. Finally, we have potential sources. The sources can be documents, data exports, or any other place that you may be able to find the answer to this question. This can be helpful for performing review of the documents that the organization provides, or for giving the organization an idea of where to look if they are unsure of how to answer the question. The HVA assessment report has undergone several changes to streamline it and improve consistency. Here is the outline for the HVA 3.0 assessment report. Many of the sections remain the same. The key insight section has been renamed to key findings. As you can see, the report no longer contains the risk management or incident management sections. Any relevant concerns related to those content areas can now be placed under the findings section. Another substantial change to the HVA assessment report is the new risk scoring matrix. To increase consistency in scores applied to similar risks, HVA 3.0 includes a numeric scoring system for both technical and procedural risks. The matrix shown is for technical risks. 
the assessor reviews each line and chooses the score that most closely applies to the observed risk. Then, the total score allows them to easily determine whether the risk is critical, major, moderate, or low. Here are some tips for assessing HVAs under the new format. Take a moment to review these strategies and then we'll look at some specifics for each tip. Begin by asking an opening question. This can be the first question of the capability as written or a more general question to get the conversation started. However, you should be prepared to ask follow-up questions and get additional information. HVA SMEs may just answer yes or no. You need to get clear responses about their implementation to determine if the practice is implemented or not. Review the domain and its capabilities at the start of each domain. This helps both put the questions in context and give HVA SMEs clarity on the purpose of each question. Restate each capability before asking its questions. It is important to remember that, ultimately, you are trying to determine if the capability itself is implemented, and the questions are the means to achieve this. Restating the capability helps keep this in focus. Before starting each domain, it can be helpful to identify the individual who will be responsible for responding to the questions. While others may jump in to provide clarity or support any gaps in knowledge, having one person who answers questions helps keep things moving and minimizes confusion and long pauses. Thank you for viewing this webinar. For more information on training for HVA 3.0 assessments, visit the AES program website. Thanks again for your time and attention.